I got it. Thanks. All right, cool. Um, all right, so you uh, just interrupt me whenever, so that's fine. Um, make it useful for you. Um, let's see, I'll have to log in here too. The, um, because basically the goal here is just to make sure I'm on the right page, is to get um, workshop data into Simple in the appropriate fashion, right? Okay. So did you have a workshop in mind that would be great to do? You said July. Yeah, go back to July. I'm not sure what we I'm had. Go back here something. to the calendar. Sometimes that's easier. So how about your para training? Does that sound like a fun one? Oh, that one's in August. Yeah, and they oh. don't. And they don't register, they register okay, differently for that one. Okay. So, Mant would be good. Yep, there you go. Do a Mant. August okay. 11th, we got it. All right, so if I go to the registration list from there, I can see who all came and that's great. And this is good, what you wanna do at, after you've done all of the paperwork for the workshop. So you know who's actually came and who didn't come, um, those kind of things. Um, actually, and I believe these I have, have been more cleaned up already, this. right, Demanda? July, you've gone. Power. Yep. Yep. So they're I don't ready. Have my whole powers here. So. Oh, okay. So they've been ready. They've been cleaned up. They're the correct data ready to pull over. Yes. Cool. And so you know all about that. that obviously, that seems like it's not a big thing with regard to um, manage things in OD. Because if you go to here, this allows you to cancel them or mark that this person didn't come, those kind of things yep. that I think should be lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that. Um, so once you're here on the registration list page, they have an export for simple. The good thing is this kind of does all the magic for you. It filters out the cancel people, adds in the others. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, which opens up Excel for me. Um, and this is where you can do some manual type things too. So what you'll notice is there's nine, eight lines of data here, but there are, you know, a lot of people, um, 31 items. Well, some of them are canceled. That is a little bit disconcerting sometimes when you look at that because, but realize that we're grouping them together by school. So like this school has six people, that one has eight, that one has four. I don't know what those are. I didn't really write that in the report, but this little county district number is the magic to make simple understand who you're talking about mm -hmm. as far as schools go. And so that does the work for you. And then also it puts the staff members, those are our comma separated for whoever is affiliated with that and in the registration system. So um, there's getting that data. So now I'm going to switch over to simple and log in. Have you been able to log in yet? Yes. Yep. Good. All right. Thinking hard. Maybe I didn't type it in right. That's possible. Yep, not really happy there. Let's try this again. All right, log in. Good, I'm happy. So. This since this happened in July, <clears throat> you'll want to be a little careful. <clears throat> it's really the only time of year that's the only problem because you want to not put it in this year, you want to put it in the next year. And on Actually. August 1st, it switches to July from 22 to 23. So up here, once you're logged in, you can switch back to last year. And that's what we'll want to do. And you'll notice the numbers change when you do that. So that just means, you know, we have almost no participants so far this year, which totally makes sense and a whole bunch from last year. So you switch to that. And under the uh, admin section, there's an activity logs area. <clears throat> um, and 
what's going to happen here. I'm not going to do this because it's probably going to try and default to ESU 10. So um, I'll demo it and then I'll have you guys push the button that actually makes it happen. Um, so when you do it, so that I'll go as far as that. Um, so I can do this. There's two different options here. One is activity logs and one is activity logs, including the service. We're going to pick this one because we don't have the service included on this. We just have, we just know that MANT training is this coming up service. So I'm going to do this one. And what happens is <clears throat> you uh, get the data out of Excel and paste it into this text box here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, pretty straightforward. You just highlight what you want. Um, by the way, if you need to manipulate anything in here, you could, you know, if you wanted to have um, some different things, it's a possibility. Um, I wouldn't probably do it most of the time, but so I just highlight that, copy it, go back over to simple. I paste it into there and it looks okay. Um, but then we'll parse the text, which that means it's going to go through Look at each line, say, can I find that school? Can I find those staff members? Um, all of those kind of things and give you a hint of what's going on. So one thing that we have a problem, that's good. I'm glad it broke um, because we have a thing where, hey, staff was not found. And that comes from here. Um, we have. Yeah, I bet that Gina or Tracy are not affiliated with um, right. their new trainers. Gina is a new trainer. Okay, so. Gina's a new trainer. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cheat. I'll show you how I do this a little bit. I think you've got permission to do this. If not, Gina can log in and then an account will be provisioned for her. Yeah, uh, I can do Since that. you're wanting to get things done, let's not fiddle with that. So I'm gonna just ignore this right now. We wanna try and fix that. Basically, what that means is we did not find one of the people that you put in for the staff. Either there was a misspelling in the, uh, um, so because we match by email address. And so if I go to staff, I think you guys have this. And so we can do Gina. Well, she, she did not use her Gmail account, is the problem. Oh, okay. So, so we just, you would just need to copy that email account over instead. Yeah, so you could put that in there. So like I said, you could manipulate things in Excel, but to make things, you know, so you put that in there instead. Now that's annoying, you have to do that every time. So a couple of things to think about there. Probably since they're going to log into the registration system with the ESU8.org account, Anyway, that would be probably better to just uh, change it in simple to be. No, I think we need to out. tell her to to use the other account. Okay. We, yes, yeah. everyone was supposed to change to their Google account. So that poor okay. Amanda would not have to, but that's something that we will have to follow up on our end. Yeah. The good news is those are all the same. So I can just do a fill down and I only have to change it once. So now let's try it. Same story, get a hold of all the data I want. Um, if you do more than you want accidentally, which I'll just demo that, it's okay, but it'll probably whine at you. Anything red is something you have to address, right? Pretty much. Actually, it figured it out, so that's okay, whatever. Um, so then once you have that selected, you're going to notice that, okay, these are ESU8, that's West Holt, all these. If you have none in the problem column, that makes you really happy. This one is just because Excel likes to have an extra line in there sometimes. And so it's okay since nothing's here in the data points, it's just an extra, you can ignore that one. Uh, but then you pick the service up here and it has a searching thing. I don't know what, I think it would go under um, SPED PD. Is that possible? Okay. If that's, I don't know, but I'd have to. All right. So, Demanda, for your information, when we sent an event request, that form that you and I were dabbling with the other day, 
this yeah. is where they are selecting that. So you might have to go back to that form to figure out what service to put it under. Okay. Yeah. I don't see, we had the discussion. Maybe it just goes under, Yeah. we have a professional development. I don't remember, but. Yeah. So once that gets figured out, you pick that and then you can click the do import and that'll bring those in for you. Um, and they will show up if you want an activity, if you want to verify, you can go to the activity logs and it has the whole, all of them listed. So if you wanted to look up that MANT screening, because that's the way that the name was, um, it's not showing up right now because I didn't do the import, but then you could actually do a search for that and it'll bring it up in that way. Oh, and also doesn't ever find that in ESU 10 when you're ESU 8, but so that's the point to that's why my services aren't working right because I'm looking at my services, not yours. So again, this is where uh, you're going to have to um, do it in your your case. So there's some of those things, um, but that's pretty much it. You know, get your Excel from the registration system, copy paste it, select the service, and you're done. Um, most of the times, that'll be perfectly fine. We found a few road bumps where that may not happen. Um, another thing that can happen, um, let's see, I think I still have this in there. Let's say that we have the uh, number wrong and for the uh, school, um, it will say, hey, I can't find that school. And so that's what that would look like. That's not going to happen very often, but we have that in your area where we had a new school invented, Summerland, and then we're like, what the heck's going on with this? And so then we had to find the right number and get it all figured out. And it's not a hard thing to do, but it is just something they have to deal with. And sometimes this time of year, those things happen. But uh, sometimes too, if I think it should be solid. If it's a parochial school that hasn't joined us for PD or something in the past, we might not have it in correctly either. So. Yeah. The other thing to think about too, to, to match that up, because um, these schools here in the registration system have a, the CDN. So this has the, you just basically have to make that number match in both places. And this comes from NDE. So you should be able to kind of consider this kind of the, the standard. So let's say we had, um, I don't know, Elgin, man. There you go, St. Boniface. Okay, say they they have uh, a um, yeah. I just remember that because we used to play them in sports. They have this county district number right here. The reason they call it a county district number is because the first one, is, first two, is a county designation, which doesn't match with their license plates. But you know, wouldn't that be nice? And then the, the next four is a district designation. And then the last three is the school building designation. So it would be a lot of times the high school is like 1001. And then, but in here, since we only concerned about districts, I just put 000 and it works out fine. And I can do the math on the back end. So let's say that maybe St. Boniface wasn't reflected in the registration system. I can go into this place, find accounts. There's this entity list. And they're part of Pope John. So then we can go to Pope John. If I look at that, they have the county district number and that's what I caught. So that works like it's, it's gonna work out fine. And so when I match those, I ignore the last two digits. I just look at the first four, first six. And it works out fine. So that one already had it. But if you needed to update that information, you could do it in the registration system. Then you do a run your report again. You get a match. Everything's happy and go from there. So that's kind of some uh, rabbit trails a little bit on there. Some of the exceptions that have happened, but they don't happen very often. Good chance you'll forget and then you just have to call me anyway and we'll be fine. <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions? Yeah, what if we just have like a um, Google spreadsheet or Excel spreadsheet of people and we want to upload them, not from Odie? Yeah, so you had that 
Um, the tricky part about that is we need to know which school they're at. And so then the school, I don't think I have in the activity log uploader. Um, with the service one, I think I allow you to put in the service name and it tries to match by name if it finds it, but it still requires the county district number. And that's kind of the matching point. So we got it. That's the hard part is getting that number out. Now, if you want to, you could do that from your entity list. If you wanted to just say, you know what? Hey, I only want. Um, you know, certain list of them, I think, I don't know if it matches here, because you don't really want to have all the stuff from other places. I thought we had a way to pull up just those from, but what we could do then is from here, you can export this and get a list. Maybe that's the easiest way to come up with um, the entity to County district number, and I, I, I just lied there. I don't think it's in there. I think I see it was only six schools, yeah. 188 people, but six schools. So we just have to find the six, and then yeah, and then you'll want to also combine them into one line, probably. So if you had 25 from this school, that's just you just put that as that. But this is a great template. You can take this and and just you know take that, start a new sheet and say, okay, well, this is what I want to do. So then I can fill in the, the, the blanks on that. And uh, it'll, you know, it's, it's a little manual, no question about it, but it would, it's doable. Okay. It's kind of what I thought. And then once we get that created, you just copy it in and parse your text same way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you know the resource and location you can leave blank if you want to that one or anything. It just wants to have a hole there probably for it. So, okay. Any questions, Demanda? Um, what if you pull something? Because I think I did <laughs> when a couple weeks ago when I first asked Molly, I was trying to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I think I did the export for Excel and pulled that into that first July. Um, I don't, I have to pull the calendar back up and like went through the steps. Is there a way, can I change? Can I go back and put the export from, for simple into that spot if I've already pulled it over into simple? Like, so you, you're saying maybe you got it in the wrong year? Um, I got the, I think I brought the wrong data. Like I oh, brought okay. an Excel sheet instead of that simple sheet. Oh, well, it probably would have yelled at you significantly. There was a bunch of red. Yeah. But probably didn't ever do it really. Okay. Because then I was panicked and I got Molly and then I just stopped touching it. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> The you, what you can do is do a little searching in your list and see yeah. if you see anything. But I'm I'm probably right. If there's a red thing in there on the problem, it and you try to import it, it will just ignore it. Okay, it doesn't know what to do. So um, it will you know if you had 20 items and 19 of them had red, you would import one item, and so that would be how it worked. But the tricky part of that is, uh, you know, if you, you're trying to catch those, um, you don't want to do it twice because you could get dupl duplicates on that. But uh, usually you'll know all you need to know before you push the do import um, and uh, you can go from there. Okay. Good question. <laughs> Nate, I've got a quick question about Odie and uh -huh. Heidi being on here, you can help too. Is there, uh, and maybe we've already answered this, is there a best way to enter a event in OD that happens multiple times that gets the most accurate data over to simple without doing them each a separate time? Because sometimes if we put it in there, it's happening four dates and they register once, but they don't actually come each date, have we addressed that, Heidi? Uh, 
Um, I know, I think I've talked to Nate about it, but to be honest, that was a while ago and I'm not sure of the answer. Did Nate leave or is he still here? Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I can't see. There you are. Um, and well, that's a good question. And then the whole yeah. the thing of like, okay, well, we did the new teacher academy and they're coming once a quarter. Yep. I mean, don't do that, I guess would be the. <laughs> I think there were, there were pros and cons to either. And you just, you might, might be off for four separate times and four registrations, or you do one and have to deal with some of the, the people not coming either way. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think you could just, I would be kind of consistent. So you're used to it, I think, and be the big deal. And, and in Odie, that sometimes that's awkward because when do you send the bill? Okay. Is it uh, before the first, you know, you yeah. make it, you send it for four days. Here you go. Or um, I'm going to bill after it's yeah. all said and done. So show when you came or not. So yeah, yeah those are just kind of. Kind of okay. Funny. Well, then we'll just keep doing what we're doing and figure it out. Yeah. Type of deal. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you're going to have a, a wrong way. It's just, those are hard. Yeah. Um, okay. I wish we had a, I w if you come up with a genius way to handle that, I would love to know because I don't. No, you're the genius. That's what I was one. asking. So, yeah. Okay. So I still pull those over every month then if it had four times and it's not the fourth one or I'm trying to follow. <laughs> I would think you would pull it over for each workshops uh, and not the sessions necessarily, but for the whole workshop. So uh, like, um, like that Mant one, day one and day two, those are two separate sections and that'd be okay. You can pull those separate. So whenever you do the paperwork on Mant day one, then pull it over into simple. Go back uh, but, and look, go back and look at a letters one, multi-volume down there. There's a letters just down a little ways. Okay. Okay. So there she's got four dates. Right. They only register once, though. Mm -hmm. I would do that April sixth or whenever you uh, wrap up the the paperwork for that workshop. So even though there's four big different days, um, you know that's going to be. Is anybody registered for that yet? So it doesn't matter, uh, but you're only going to do it once. Yeah, I would say do once per workshop, even if it's multi-day. So then we do the export for this. One thing you'll notice on that, I, I, you can run the export any time. Uh, just kind of think about it. Let's do it again. Okay, and the duration. So it does, here's the dates. And that's six hours that day. But then this day has that many days. And you might notice probably too, when you do mark who came and who didn't come, that will change the number of people that attended for that school. So it's gonna still reflect every day in there. So even if uh, you know Pierce came, um, they're gonna show up four times, one for each day. Uh, in the export, and then that'll come in as an activity log. Um, I, I guess for me, I think that means probably you could do the export after each day, but I think I would prefer to just do it. I mean, if I was doing it, I would do it after the whole thing's over um, so that I know that I've done it all at once instead of did I do that date or did I not do that date? And just for me, mental gymnastics of remembering what I did or didn't do but you can do it however you wish <clears throat> or you could do it just once but after the first meeting too because it's not going to change right no it well technically it could because um let's take a look here um well if it, some people may not come the second yeah if the they day. are marked that they're not attending, oh okay yep yep it would change so yep. <clears throat> you're right at the end okay mm -hmm. So that so, way, because, you know, something. Or you would have to go in, if I'm just doing the October one, I would uncheck all the other boxes and just upload for, no, that won't work either. I, what I would do is download that spreadsheet and then just highlight the October dates and copy and paste that over. 
done. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if it really depends on how we want to use the data. Do we want schools to have that data before April 6th? Yeah. If for some reason they need that, then Demanda can go in and just do the sections yeah. by copying just those dates in that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. That's probably most accurate. So if you want more up to timeline, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's uh, procedures you guys will have to work out, but mm -hmm. certainly can do it whenever you need to. Okay, got it. Thank you. That that's helpful. Those are always the hard ones. I have another hard one for you, Nate. Oh no! <laughs> and Amanda, I don't We're know the recording, this, so I don't. I, I don't know that this affects Amanda. I know that 